What's up guys, this is Jeff with Online Cubase Tutorials and I wanted to show you something today that is pretty cool. Uh, it's called the Step Designer. It's a MIDI insert that you put onto a VST and uh, with the Step Designer you can create your own um, step sequences. And uh, one of the thing uh, that I want to show is you can right click here somewhere in the window and pick always on top so you don't lose this window. It makes it really a lot easier. So the way this thing works is you pick a VST and I have a bass sound going to um, this Vacuum Pro VST. Pretty cool synth sound. And uh, so what you can see here is I've got um, some patterns that I put into the step designer. So let's um, see how this thing works. So you notice there's a bunch of patterns in here and you can scroll through them. Um, I have some made there. It doesn't come with any by default. So you have to create your own patterns. Um, and for some reason, this, this doesn't work at all. This is only for your own presets. So you can save a preset. Um, so you can see here we've got velocity is, um, looks like about halfway. You can edit these. And then you can switch here to gate and these are all fully gated. So it's like, these are, uh, by default 16th notes. And, um, so just getting started, if I just wanted to throw in a bunch of sounds here, um, I'm, I'm writing in G sharp for some reason. So I'm just going to throw a bunch of G sharps in here and, uh, you can see, um, when I rewind and press play, I'm on pattern four actually. So when you activate the step designer. Um, this has a different effect on uh, every synthesizer or every different sound that you use. But you can see it's, it's a pretty interesting way to get, uh, unique sounds that you wouldn't normally be able to do when playing. It's a little bit different from an arpeggiator. Um, this lets you design every note as well as every velocity step and every um, gate as well. So if you want shorter notes, it might be a little bit hard to hear, but now you can see um, this is very, very short notes. So it's, um, it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of fun to play around with this thing. And, uh, if you hit setup, you can actually load in all of your different controllers. So if you wanted to, you could have um, modulation or um, expression or aftertouch, um, as well available in the step designer. If you know what control number you need for your particular synthesizer. Um, so it's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, you can see, I just have, a creating a pattern here. All right. So that's the basics of how the step designer works. Um, I guess I could change some notes around too, but other things while I was getting ready to make this tutorial. So you can have many different patterns here. If I were to flip to the pattern five, pattern six, these are some different ones that I made. And um, if you wanted to, uh, actually you can take this pattern four, you can copy, 
go down to pattern three and paste it and then adjust it from there. Um, so it's, it's a pretty quick way to make, um, different patterns for electronic music. If you're not, um, if you don't have a, uh, MIDI controller, you can use it. Um, or if you just not a very good, uh, piano player, if you don't have a good arpeggiator, um, I kind of don't, you can, you know, there's Apache, Apache five and Apache SX, but they don't really have controls over the gate and the velocity. So with the step designer, you have uh, the ability to send those different values along with your pattern. It makes a huge difference for some uh, VSTs, especially with velocity. You can hear the, hear the difference in this patch a lot. I want to untie that. Just change this pattern just a little bit. Now what's interesting is if I uh, were to send a different note, so this is the basic usage is you can just make different patterns. And what you do is starting at C1, C1, um, if you'd notice, I'm just using one measure at a time right now because that's 16, 16 notes. Um, if you go and make a note, a single MIDI note here, you'll watch what happens here. Now, when I press play, it just switched to pattern one. And it took me a while to figure out what was going on because I was playing notes on the MIDI controller and it was changing this pattern. So what I figured out is C1 is pattern one, C sharp one is pattern two. Now C and now on D1 we get pattern three. So if you if you count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so you can trigger with your um, your uh, MIDI channel here. So if we increase this to um, two measures, I could switch here from, see here's on D, which is sending pattern three. And then here I could send a D sharp. Oops. So it's kind of weird how they got this um, this pattern to change. See, it's a little bit confusing. You'd think you'd have to do a pattern change message, um, like in a control, something like that. I've seen, um, you know, basically the, the way it works is, um, just changing the note that you're sending to the, uh, to the, to the channel. Somehow the step designer reads that note and uh, changes the pattern accordingly. So you can see here now I've got, I, I should glue this together here. Uh, that's this one. Okay, so now you can see I've got, well, where'd my note go? <laughs> uh, so that's because this is a C3, too high. Let me move it. All right, there we go. So now you can see if I switch, if I, if I run this now, three, four, three, and then it switches to four. So I, I built a couple patterns here. So let's go to six. All right, so that's how you can control the step designer uh, with MIDI. Now, what's interesting too is, um, let me delete that. It's, uh, further on down the track, I'm about to show how I got that pattern out of there. So if I were to go back here, I'm going to close this down and you can see here, there's a little button right here that says record output to track. So with that, I can hit record, hit this right here, hit record, and then get ready to uh, trigger. Well, before I do that, let me show you um, that you can actually just play along with your with your music. Um, so let's say I have the just uh, kick and the shaker here. All right. So 
So now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch the notes on my MIDI, MIDI controller. All right, so there's pattern one, two, three. I'm playing D on my MIDI controller. do this in real time and and then you can record that as MIDI. So for example, if I you know drag this out for four bars and I record Do that again. So, so basically, you can use the MIDI track. You can use the MIDI track as a step designer pattern switcher, and just send the note as a trigger for the pattern that you want it to play. So that's one way you can use it. Let me let me just try that again. You can kind of see how it goes. So as an example, I just hit a couple of notes to switch the pattern there. And you can tell now if I press play. So what's interesting is it treats this whole 16 note pattern as a pattern. So you can tell that I switched the pattern kind of off the beat. Um, you may want to end up, you know, correcting this by moving those notes back to the exact bar line where you want to trigger it. Because it will switch the pattern halfway through. So in other words, you know, if, if you hit a note, halfway through the measure, it'll switch the pattern halfway through the pattern. So it does switch in real time. Let's try that now. Very strange. It doesn't seem to work how I imagined, but it is switching the pattern. It just seems like there's either a delay or a lag or something like that. Let me show you, I think, what a better way is to work with the, the step designer. This might be a bug actually. Um, I'm not really sure if it's a bug or a feature, but it seems a little bit confusing. So what I ended up doing was programming the note. All right, what did I just delete? Not sure. Um, I'm going to get rid of this here. And what I ended up doing, what works better for me, is if you hit this uh, MIDI track again, you edit the step designer, um, and you hit record output to track. So now if I hit, let me actually delete this empty pattern here. So we're only going to do one measure at a time and actually not loop it. And I'm going to set um, punch in and punch out from interesting. Yeah, there we go. So now if I hit record. See, I just recorded pattern five to MIDI. There's pattern five. Now I can switch to pattern four. So you can play around with it. There's pattern four. And then you can see I did the rest of them out here in the timeline, and you can mess around with those. So I hope you uh, got something out of this. That's how the step designer works. And once you're done with it, you can just 
disable it. So it does give you uh, some creative ability to create MIDI patterns without using your MIDI controller too much and uh, be surprised at what you, what you get. Hope this video was useful. Let me know what you thought in the comments.